Hello everyone, I'm Vanessa Damani, a second year medical student at MBRU and I will be talking about imaging in gynae today. So, when imaging the female pelvis, what is normal for one female can be abnormal for another, depending on age, hormonal status and their menstrual period. Except for looking for foreign bodies, there is no major role for a plain x-ray in gynecological imaging. Over here, we have a five-year-old patient. She came to the pediatric clinic complaining of a bright orange discharge. There are no visible abnormalities on clinical exam or on x-rays. The ultrasound was not very informative either. An MRI was performed under conscious sedation and it showed a foreign body in the vagina. There was no distension of the uterine cavity, no evidence of perforation or injury to surrounding soft tissue structures. The foreign body turned out to be an orange crayon. MRI is a modality of choice for pelvic benign and malignant focal lesions. It is of high resolution. It gives us clear zonal anatomy with an enhancement of the pattern, gives us a good idea of contents of the lesions. It could be blood, calcification, fat, etc. It allows the evaluation of other pelvic organs, soft tissues and bones. There are a few physiological factors that affect the appearance of the junctional zone on an MRI. The junctional zone is less distinct premenarch during pregnancy and in postmenopausal patients due to changes in fluid content. Is the junctional zone important in MRI for diagnosing uterine pathologies? Well, it helps assess the depth of the myoinvasion in endometrial carcinoma and is crucial for diagnosing adenomyosis. The three zones of the uterus on a T2-weighted MRI would include high T2 signal of the endometrium, low T2 signal of the junctional zone, which is basically the inner myometrium, and intermediate T2 signal of the outer myometrium. Over here in the first image, we see a normal menopausal MRI of the uterus with a thinned out endometrium and a barely visible junctional zone. On the other hand, we see a normal 30 years old retroverted uterus with three clear zones including the myometrium, the endometrium and the junctional zone in between. Ultrasound is the modality of choice for most gynecological conditions. It can be done trans-abdominally like the pictures over here. We use the full bladder as an acoustic window. It shows us the anatomy all the way from the skin, the abdominal wall, the urinary bladder, the uterus, including the myometrium, the endometrium, and the ovaries. Over here, the, the ultrasound is done transvaginally. It shows us the anatomy and it is very easy to correlate with an atlas. For example, in this image, we see a normal left ovary. Over here, we have a 34 years old normal adult female pelvic transvaginal ultrasound. The endometrium is thin on the labeled images and thick on the left image and this could probably just be because of the positioning. What could be mistaken for cysts in the ovaries are just physiological follicles. So, over here, we have a side-by-side -side comparison of a transabdominal and a transvaginal ultrasound. We could identify a transabdominal ultrasound by the following characteristics. A curvilinear probe against the skin. We, we see the abdominal wall, then the bladder, then the uterus. A transabdominal ultrasound allows for good penetration but less resolution. It gives us a larger field of view in case of large fibroids or pelvic masses. A transvaginal probe is circular and it is in direct contact with the cervix and the uterus and allows high resolution images. This slide shows the difference in appearance of the zonal anatomy according to the time in the menstrual period. For example, if a patient is early in the follicular phase and is showing 2 cm endometrium, it's abnormal. If a patient is late in the luteal phase and is showing 2 mm endometrium, we consider menopause. It is the same for an MRI. It shows us the zonal anatomy with correlation to the menstrual cycle. Can we see zonal anatomy by CT scan? Simply put, no. CT scan is not the modality of choice when imaging the female pelvis. Well, with a few exceptions. 
over here, we are imaging the pelvis of a six-year-old. The normal pre-pubertal uterus would be tubular in shape and the cervix would be wider than the fundus. We would have one millimeter or no measurable endometrium, no follicles in the ovaries. The size of the uterus would be less than one centimeter up to six years old. Over here, a 13 years old patient comes to the clinic with lower abdominal pain. The parents are worried because she did not receive her periods yet. Upon imaging, we find a normal pubertal appearance and there's nothing to worry about. Over here, we see the postmenopausal normal uterus and ovaries. The endometrium has been thinned out. We are also able to see the atrophic ovaries. In an ultrasound like this, we look for either cervical, uterine or ovarian focal lesions. This brings us to the end of this presentation. Thank you so much and I hope this was useful.